not you again, Steve, does it? Here we go. I've got Greg. Hello there. Hi, Joe Page. Nice to meet you, sir. And I, I see the uh, very helpful and handsome Steve Mason. Hi, Steve. Hi, I like the leg. Yeah, dude, yeah, it's a little, you know, it's all a little warm, but I figured, hey, it's a lie, you know? <laughs> Let's go with a theme. I'll, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll try and tell you something you don't know about Hawaii, just uh, 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 very briefly, is, you know, the term aloha, everyone knows that, and, and it means hello and goodbye and love and all sorts of stuff. But the, the way the word breaks down in Hawaiian is A-L-O, alo, means the presence of or existence. And ha, H-A, ha, is breath. So aloha is the presence of breath or life. And that's the genesis of, uh, of the word. I think it's kind of neat. Um, and Steve, I, I, I've got uh, about a half dozen uh, uh, new requests waiting for me this morning when I uh, uh, got up and uh, I was able to accommodate all those and send them the information. And, and like I said, if you want to make if you want to make me the co-host, so I can. Oh, can... absolutely. Yes. How they see sees power, Joe? Just to give you a heads up. See again, Greg. This is how they try to get power. You know, by becoming a co-host and working their way up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, only Steve. Only Steve. The deep Sherlockian state. Um, it's it's the money it's the money that motivates me. I, I think I got a phone call from somebody here. Yeah. So Greg, you didn't last long on the Portland call. Go page. I went to the movie. Here. It was just. Oh yeah, so, hey, hey. Oh okay. Well, I figure I can always I can watch the movie anytime. No, nothing, so. something it wasn't a bad one this time with Raymond Massey. People were saying it's the best quality. Sure. Video they've seen for that movie. Got it. I'll, I'll send you a price. Well, usually it's bad. Um, How's that? Yeah. There was just too much cross talk in that meeting, also for me. Oh. Um, you should get on the Phoenix one sometime. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cat fight on that one every time. You have a presentation coming up, is it? I'm supposed to run the discussion at the December one on the six Napoleons, so. Me. I may show up for that one since I represent the six Napoleons, but. I'll be happy to give you a speaking part. No. <laughs> uh, six Zoom calls today is way too many. Well, this is my fourth one. Here we've got Dino coming in. Okay, somehow you make Greg Ruby the co-host and me not the co-host. Wow! Wow! Okay. I like that. No, I've got. I'm going to withdraw Greg, but I've got Steve. No, my goodness! What? Do you want to make Steve? Yes. I thought that's exactly what I did before, but. Okay, Steve's now co-host. How's that? Okay. Some people are born to greatness, others have it thrust upon them. Um. <laughs> and, oh, I've got, oh, I know, I know who this one is. And I've got, I've got Chris Harado coming in, who's muted. Hi, Chris. And that must be Mike McSwiggin. We did a wonderful job this morning. What's that all about? Um, they did their Saturday with Sherlock at the Pratt Library in Baltimore. And so they invited nine people to talk about who their favorite character in the canon was. And Mike did a very good job talking about Henry Baker from the Blue Carbuncle. 
I appreciate the kind words. It was a fun time. Especially when you lost your hat. I still have my hats. I can do <laughs> this hat. I can do this hat. I'm not putting the Christmas lights back on though. Steve, I wanted your email a little bit later on, probably tomorrow, about your, your question about the Pratt event. Yeah. Um, I just need to recover from eight hours of Zoom. Okay. No problem. No big hurry, but our society, we've held several seminars at this library in Allen, Texas. They've got a really nice theater that we can use for free, and the guy is very, very friendly about it, and so I've... Uh, Uh, but we just decided we might as well make it an annual, you know, event that's actually scheduled the same weekend every year as much as, because to this point, it's just been kind of randomly done. So I think it would make more sense to do one every year like they do at the Pratt Library. But I'd like to see what kind of thing, because we've done, we did one on women of the canon and we did one uh, Sherlock Holmes in, um, Opera, popular culture, but I'd like to see what other ones they've done. Well, we see, I've got uh, Rich is on board. And, Aloha. Uh, Aloha. Aloha. And there's Lori, Lori James, and uh, I think uh, hiding under a Dino is a Jennifer. Hello. Hello, Jennifer Lowe. Aloha. Aloha. And let, hey, let me ask, Steve, let me ask you one question. I, I, I uh, wrote a few notes that, and I'm looking at them right now. Is, uh, if, if I read off this, is this particularly distracting or is it okay? No, no that's fine. Is he okay? Very yeah. good. I'll get, rid of, I'll, I'll get rid of them for now. Joe, I like your background. Nice, nice wall. Is it okay? Thank, thank you, thank you. It's it's only because I have wonderful neighbors uh, that I want to inspire, like like your Hawaiian background. Really looking good. And we got well, we'll. I, I'd like to start kind of on time, but we'll give it a few minutes. Uh, you know, after one, uh, to see who all. Here's Monica Schmidt coming in. I see. You're spread out over what six different time zones at this point, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Hello, Monica. Hello. Holy. Good smoke. to see all of you guys. <laughs> I, I I miss some of you. I spent half the morning with most of you. I spent. I I've been doing a bunch of emails with Monica. And uh, hi, Monica. Good to. Oh, greetings, Joe. Nice to meet you. Good to see you in person. Same same here. And I see John Simons, uh, who's a writer extraordinaire here in Oahu. Excellent, excellent. Um, and let's take a look. I just had a Facebook friend ask me for the link. Is that okay if I send it uh, to Walter? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally cool. Okay. There we go. It must be Susan. Perfect. Oh. Hello. And be, be still my heart. I see Peter Blau. <laughs> Peter. We'll, we'll come back to you, Peter, <laughs> for sure. There we go. Well, I can remember how to say aloha. That's a good thing. Well, they say there's three important words to learn if you come to Hawaii. Aloha, of course, which is hello, you know, hello, goodbye, love. Mahalo, which is thank you. And the third most important word in Hawaii is sunscreen. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was that thing you're wearing around your neck. Lay. That seems important. Well, that, 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 that it does too. It's, it's kind of warm, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn up the air here or something. 
what I thought. He says he says to a bunch of people who are on the mainland freezing our butts off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not me, baby. <laughs> Florida's doing all right. Uh, I was going to say. Florida's it was, it was 70, 75 degrees for us today, so it was beautiful. Oh, you oh. suck. I, 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 I think the high was 46 today. 39 oh. here in Michigan. Uh, huh. Ooh. What's John, John? John Simons is holding something up. I see with two twenty one B. John, I what's a brick? Unmute yourself. Here. Yes, it's the. Uh, in uh, we were in my wife and I were in London in nineteen eighty four, and we went to this place where a bank had built itself on uh, the legendary but fictitious address and to um, deal with the uh, uh, American tourists who kept coming there looking for uh, artifacts of Sherlock Holmes, they manufactured these bricks, these souvenir bricks, which they happily sold to us for $20 each. And uh, so we still, still have it after um, 36 years. Those bricks actually are from 221B when the Abbey National Building Society right. renovated their building. They donated their bricks to charity <clears throat> and they were uh, sold to benefit the charity. Those right. are the real McCoy. Yes. <clears throat> right. It was, uh, it was uh, money spent in a good cause. Um, I can't remember how we managed to get it back in our uh, luggage uh, when we came back, but it, uh, luggage was a lot easier in those days. There's so many new folks, just welcome everyone. <laughs> we'll get started in a few minutes. Well, actually, Hawaiians in this group. I've been to Hawaii. Does that count? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I I always I always like to tell people that haven't been to Hawaii uh, that it's pretty much what you think it is, and uh, uh, that's that's held true for me. Uh, other other than uh, traffic jams during you know drive time and a few interesting insects, it's a great place. Man, I love it here. What part are you in there? Uh, I'm, I'm on Oahu. Uh, I'm on the uh, uh, south uh, western portion in Kapolei, which is sort of the Chicago of Hawaii. It's a second city after uh, Honolulu, and uh, it's a planned city. It's been it's been functional for about 25 years, maybe, and uh, it continues to grow. And it's a it's a really a, a, a good spot on the island. It's near Koalina which is a great resort area. That's where the Disney Hotel is. Uh, we have a water park and, uh, uh, and again, it's, it, it continues to grow. Well, it's certainly beautiful. I've visited several of the islands there. The Garden Isle and the, uh, hmm. there's, they all have their own names. They do, and you know, there's there's eight islands that compose Hawaii, and uh, it, it may be news to some of you, not the Hawaiians, but the, the, the fun question is, you know, what's the ninth island? And uh, we here in Hawaii know that the answer is Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> because that, 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 that's, that's where all the Hawaiians go on vacation. <laughs> uh. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and there are Stacy's on board. Hi, Stacy. Well, I'm going to guess once Joe Hi. announces the Hawaiian hazing ritual that you have to do to be a member of the society, that a lot of us will probably drop off. <laughs> no, you just you just you just have to be kind to me, and uh, that's the only uh, only requirement, uh, honestly. 
but I will, uh, I will, I will tell you, I, I would like, that we're, we, we don't have overwhelming numbers. Uh, again, I expect that somewhere between, you know, 2025, you know, it looks like we're, we're getting there. And uh, I, I'm seeing 23 right now. And uh, I, I, I can mention it from time to time, but I think everyone's fairly familiar with Zoom. Uh, you might want to turn on chat if you haven't already, if you want to contact you can contact someone privately as, as well as uh, publicly uh, in chat, if, if you know. And uh, when we have our guest speaker, I'll ask everybody, you know, to mute themselves. Um, if not, we've got a kill button here that either Steve or I will readily activate. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'll have a Q&A and a we'll, 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 get, we'll get back in step with, with all that. Oh, and I see Pam, I'm looking at Pam Vary here for the first time and her, her, and her handsome husband. And uh, Pam is very special because she, she belonged to the previous science society, which we were just. Where'd they go? Just disappear? Yeah, the uh, Andaman Islanders. We'll, we'll talk about that very, very briefly. And uh, when I think... Let me just give it about one more minute, and we'll we'll pull the trigger on this and uh, and get started. Yeah. See, Derek's on board now. Boy, it's a, oh, Hal Blatzer belonged to the first one too. Say again. Hey, Hal. Hal's down there. Hi. Oh, there's Hal Blatzer. Yes. He's much more of a member than I was. Much more. Um, oh, he and huh? Marcia. Did he have to play Hal Blatzer? Did you do? Sherlock Holmes play with he the last. Did he? Yes, that was me. I bought that Sherlock DVD. Sherlock Holmes and the Volcano yeah. Horror. I bought that DVD when it came out. You were real nice to me in an email. There it is. That's I read it's a pleasure. On my shelf. <laughs> I have a personal copy I want you to know, and it's a great, great story. And, you know, it's you, there's not a lot about Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and uh, associated with Hawaii, at least. But uh, Lele Huma, I see, is, is on board too, and she's writing something. We'll get to that. And uh, I think I think we're about ready to start. Is that okay? Sure. And, Over and, it. Uh, let me. I want to pull up some notes and take a look at those, and hopefully it won't be too distracting. But anyway, aloha, everyone. And uh, aloha. <laughs> thank you. Well, I want to. I'm going to give you a, a one shaka. Two shakas, and it's just a Sherlockian shaka, I think. Or it's the best I could come up with here. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, welcome to the inaugural meeting of the uh, the shaka Sherlockians of Hawaii. And the first thing I'll ask everybody to do is just to uh, I've already done it with a clock on the wall here, but uh, I'll ask you to take your watches and set them back to 1895 real quick. And uh, once you've done that, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. Um, I'm, I'm your host, Joe Page, and I want to really thank everyone for attending. This is a, a big deal for us, and uh, I, I've got many good folks that uh, reached out, and I'll be coming to the guest speaker before too much longer, but a special thanks to Steve Mason uh, who uh, and Lori James, I, I'll add, who both went out of their way to, to help me uh, prepare uh, for, for this event. Oh, yeah, my wife, Gretchen, but... Uh, I want to make, make sure I include her. But uh, anyway, with this this new science society, we're we're basically we're all about fun and, and friendship uh, and learning more about the the master and the Sherlockian world. And I want to emphasize that membership's no cost, uh, and, and it's noted on our website. And the only real requirement is congeniality, uh, and that's uh, that's I think important in the Sherlockian world. And I, I think you all should consider yourselves, if you wish, as uh, charter members of uh, our new society. And I think that's that's kind of neat. Maybe I'll do something about that uh, later. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, some years from now, when we look look back on 2020 and, and all the, the turmoil we've experienced, that uh, this will be uh, one of the things on the, uh, the plus side of the lecture. Now, what I'd like to, to do is just just kind of as an icebreaker is just briefly recognize everyone and, and just have you say a quick hello uh just for you know 20 30 seconds uh uh and i 
you can give your your name, uh, your location, which is important mm -hmm. uh, to me, and and your occupation, if 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 you wish. And um, I'll wait to get through uh, to I'll, I'll wait to later to introduce our guest speaker, though, uh, which will be coming shortly. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of me goes a long way, so let me. I'll just start. Uh, I'm Joe Page. Uh, I live in Makakilo uh, on Oahu, and uh, I'm a retired Army officer and uh, later went to work as a Department of Defense civilian before retiring uh, a few years ago. And uh, if I could, uh, uh, Steve, could I, could I ask you to go next? Sure. My name is Steve Mason. I live in Denton, Texas, which is part of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, and I'm the leader of the crew of the Bark Lone Star, which is our Scion Society. And I'm also a committee chair on the Beacon Society, which is a national educational society for um, young Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and I retired from the federal government in January of this year after 32 years, so. Okay, very good. Let me let me go, Greg, Greg Ruby, can you unmute yourself? Thanks, Greg. Uh, sure, hello everyone. My name is Greg Ruby from Baltimore, Maryland. I am the SOB in charge of the group, the Sherlockians of Baltimore. Um, I live about 40 minutes away from our speaker, but this is the first time I have ever heard him give a presentation, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, okay. It's, it seems like I've become a professional Zoomer in the last seven months also. That was my new career. So very glad good. to be here. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Chris Harado, can you unmute? Yeah, so I've got it muted because uh, I've got a five-year-old that's really loud, so. <laughs> uh, I live in Jacksonville, North Carolina, home of Camp Lejeune. Um, I am a real estate agent, and I am super excited to see the to hear the speaker speak today, tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So so am I. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Mike McSwigan. Hi, I'm Mike uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am a pharmacist. I'm the second most dangerous member of the Tankerville Club of Cincinnati, and I'm the founder of a pharmacist scion called the Fairly Good Dispensers. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Rich, Chris Yunus, is that right? Did I say that right, Chris, Rich? Oh, you can you unmute yourself, Chris, uh, Rich. There you go. Rich Chris Yunus, uh, Northville, Michigan, uh, just outside of Detroit. Uh, I was uh, a prosecuting attorney for 28 years, retired from that, did criminal defense, was a law school professor, teaching how to try cases for 37 years. And uh, I'm a member of probably a dozen uh, scions, including the crew of the Bark Lone Star, uh, and locally ah. the Ripston Pippins, and the uh, Greek interpreters of Lansing, and the Amateur Medican Society of Detroit. Very good, thanks, Rich. Uh, Jennifer Lowe. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Lowe. I live in Augusta, Georgia, home of the uh, Masters. I don't know if anybody's watching it right now, but it's a great tournament we have here every year. I currently work in um, HR and finance for an investment retirement firm. Um, and I'm very excited to be here tonight and to meet all of you. I grew up learning a lot about Sherlock Holmes and um, everything surrounded by that. So I'm very excited. So aloha. Great. Glad to see some young folks here. Speaking of young folks, Lori James. Lori, can I ask you to go next? You bet. Aloha. Uh, my name is Lori James, and I am a professor at the University of Hawaii at West Oahu. I am Joe's, one of Joe's neighbors, and I'm excited to see uh, what you guys are all up to. Very good, Lori. Let me ask, let me go to uh, Monica Schmidt. Monica. Um, uh, sorry about that. There we go. Uh, Unmuted. Hi, I'm Monica Schmidt um, from, or we'll just say zooming in from the cornfields of Iowa City, Iowa. Um, I run the Younger Stanfords of Iowa City, um, uh, taking over for Dr., or the late Dr. Richard Kaplan, BSI, um, in 2013. Um, I belong to probably about two dozen different Sherlockian societies and scions um, across the United States and Canada, including the Adventuresses of Sherlock Holmes, um, the Baker Street Irregulars, and the Hounds of the Baskerville in Chicago, as well as the um, a journeyman member of the Sons of the Copper Beaches um, in Philadelphia. Um, so uh, we'll just say if, if I could make a living um, being a professional Sherlockian, I would do that. But uh, otherwise, I'm a licensed mental health counselor, um, you know, dealing with uh, everybody's uh, trauma, especially right now during COVID. Very so good. Thanks, Monica. 
Uh, John Simons. John, can you unmute yourself and say a few words? John, I can, yeah, try and unmute yourself. Oh, there, there we go. Okay, there you thank go. you. All right. Hey, thank, thanks, Joe. Hi, I'm John Simons, a 45-year uh, resident of uh, Honolulu uh, and uh, retired newspaper editor. And I've uh, been a, a Sherlock Holmes uh, fan and reader since uh, my, uh, gosh, I think maybe 10 years old. And... Um, so uh, I, um, it's been a, sort of a lifelong um, interest. Uh, I don't belong to any organizations, but um, as I said a few moments earlier, my wife and I went to London. We went on a little journey to try to um, revisit the, uh, the 221B uh, Baker Street uh, uh, legend. And uh, so we enjoyed that. But, um, uh, really uh, have had a hard time finding mystery writers who were quite as engaging as uh, Sir Conan Doyle, even though there are hundreds of them who've done a good job at it. Anyhow, uh, eager to hear more from other people here. Thanks very much for uh, welcoming me. Thank you, John. Uh, Susan Dollinger. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Susan Dollinger. Thanks for letting me come tonight, Joe. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, and an adventurous of Sherlock Holmes, a Baker Street of regular, um, master bootmaker of the Bootmakers of Toronto, oh. member of the Black Headed League of um, Japan, a bunch of other stuff. And I'm so thrilled to see Pam Berry here tonight. I haven't seen you since that Ash dinner where you and Francine were all dressed up. It was 40 or 45 years now. It's so good to so. run into you again. Yeah. And by our uh, bylaws, you're also all at a Nash dinner because any intersection of two of us constitutes a meeting. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you have a two for one special, Joe. Thank, thank you, Susan. Howard and, Ostrom. Um, Peter, oh. might, Peter, are you a Nash what? member too? He is. Well, I think he is. So, so there's yes, three of us at least. You know. Three, four, because we have Monica. That's oh, right. And Greg. And Greg. So it's a bunch. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of heavy hitters here from both BSI and AS. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, okay, Howard, Howard Ostrom. Hi, Howard Ostrom from Ocala, Florida, the worst capital of the world, not Kentucky. And I am co-author of Sherlock Holmes on Screen series of books coming out. And I'm co-author with Thierry Sanjoni, who is the president of the Sherlock Holmes Society of France. So, wow, that's great. I think Pam's happy to see you too. Ah, great. Yes. Uh, yeah. Margaret Hoffman Page, uh, I think otherwise known as Gretchen. Uh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gretchen. I'm the wife, and I'm learning more and more about Sherlock Holmes every day. And I yeah. think it's going to be more and more from now on. <laughs> but welcome everybody to our home. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank, thank you, sweetie. Uh, Allison Green. Hello, everyone. I live in Augusta, Georgia. I am the human resource site manager for the Fort Ford and Support Project, which is kind of a dream come true. I always wanted to join the Army, didn't do that. So now I work out on Fort Gordon, which is great. And um, my father is a diehard Sherlock Holmes fan, grew up around it, and the fascination just stuck with me all this time. So I'm super excited to be here. Can't wait. Thanks, Can't wait. Alan. Thank you, Allison. Uh, next, uh, and I'm, I'm just going by the, the little screenshots I see in order. So next, I, I'd, I'd like uh, Jim Yensich just to say hello. Yeah, I'm Jim Yensich. And I'm one of Joe's neighbors here in Hawaii and stuff, retired out of the Seattle area. I'm an electrician and a project manager for an electrical contractor. And great to see everybody and just hanging out and see what this is all about. Great. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Next up, let me get, let's get to Russell Ogata. Russell, can you unmute yourself and, and say hello? Hi, I'm Russell Ogata. I teach uh, physical education <clears throat> at uh, Highlands uh, Intermediate School in Pearl City. I 
was been interested in Sherlock Holmes, I guess, since uh, I lived in Colorado and I started reading. And uh, I'm just excited to be with this uh, society. This is my first uh, joining anything Sherlockian. I uh, I went to, I went to England to teach a clinic in Sheffield, England, and uh, there were uh, there were uh, some people from London, and they they actually told me that there was a you know two twenty one B Baker Street, and if I ever got there, uh, I would check it out. So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Randy Getz. Randy. Yes. Uh, thank you, Joe, for. Um, allowing me to attend this uh, meeting. I'm a, uh, a retired fire department battalion chief, uh, 42 years in the business, and currently the leader of the, uh, the gas gene, if you will, of the uh, Noble Bachelors of St. Louis. Uh, and in congratulating the leaders and members of this new society, I will take out of context the words of Mr. Holmes. It would be superfluous to drive you mad, said Holmes in Devil's Foot. A candid observer would certainly declare that you were so already before we embarked on this wild experiment. All the best to the Shaka Sherlockians of Hawaii, my friends. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. And now from the Big Island, we've got Hal Glatzer. Hal. Hello, everyone. I'm Hal Glatzer. I'm in Hilo. Uh, I've been a fan of Sherlock Holmes since I was a small boy. Uh, I've been a member of a couple of different uh, science societies. Uh, I write mysteries, um, and uh, I will uh, do whatever I can to help this uh, new science society uh, get going. Thank you, Hal. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. And next, uh, Vicki Ledajix. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Vicki. I live just outside of downtown Chicago. Um, I work in global sales uh, for a company called Sure.com. If you've ever used a microphone, um, it was probably one of our microphones. Um, uh, I uh, was a huge Sherlock Holmes fan when I was a young reader. Um, and recently I have uh, re-picked up um, his books and I'm really excited to be here. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Vicki. Stacy, can you unmute? There we go. Hi, I'm um, Stacy Kaichi Momoro. I'm hailing from the other side of the island on the east side of Oahu, um, Hawaii Kai, um, mm. Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, it's on the opposite side where Laurie and Joe are right now. They're on the west side. Um, but uh, I'm a state mathematics resource teacher for the Hawaii Department of Education, huh. and um, I'm, a, I'm a mystery buff, and I'm excited to be here today. Thanks. Very good. Thank, thank you, Stacy. Well, Pam Berry and Hubby. Unmute. Okay. Uh, well, it's my husband, Walt, and uh, he is not a red herring. He's just a <laughs> Walt herring. And um, he and his wife were Sherlock Holmes uh, interested people and were at uh, Andaman Island meter meeting um, very, very long ago when it was at our house. Um, I can't remember with Hal, whether Hal was there or not. I mean, uh, it, was, it was quite a long time ago. I can barely remember anything about those days. Um, but both of our spouses have passed away and we, we've known each other for a very long time and somehow ended up together. And a very much longer time ago than that, when I was in college, I read Sherlock Holmes books over one Christmas vacation. I found one in a room and had to read them all suddenly. And then in reading one of them, I found out about something called the Orange Pips and a science society. And then I found Seal Baring Gould, who was a friend of my father's. And, and then she told me about Peter Blau. And he brought me to the Red Circle of Washington because I was living there. And it's been just a crazy, wonderful time since then. I'm a member of the ASH and haven't been around to meetings there because they're in New York and I'm in Hawaii. But, oh, wow, I didn't know you, you were a member of ASH. So that's great. Yes, I was also a member of the Red Circle. Yeah, I'm one of the few people in ASH who only has one name, um, Alice. 
Very good. Thanks. Thank you, Pam and Walt. I'm really glad you're you're here. And uh, next, I, I'd like to see from uh, see Lele Hua, and uh, I think she has maybe has something interesting to tell us about uh, some work she's doing. Thank you so much. Um, well, introducing myself, I first off, I have to say. Um, I love Shure microphones. I've used many Shure microphones. They are, they combine durability and quality. I'm a huge fan. Second, I have to say, I am a huge fan of Hal. Hal, love you. So glad you were on this adventure. This is my very first Sherlockian society until um, uh, basically books sent me an email. I had no idea such a thing existed. But when I was a small child, I had terrible, terrible asthma and had to sit up all night long to breathe. So my mother would bring me books. And I worked my way through the Burgess books and The Hobbit. And then one day there was a stack of Sherlock Holmes books that I worked my way through. And I uh, imagined myself as Sherlock Holmes since a small child. Um, I spent 30 years as a professional writer um, specializing in uh, science and technology, so very heading into the future, and Hawaiian history. So I spent much of my life in 1778. So I'm Sherlock Holmes is a little modern for me, but that's wonderful to learn about. Um, I, I have been finding in the last 10, 15 years that it's very difficult to teach Hawaiian history because there's so much really off the wall, egregious, egregiously wrong stuff being promoted about the islands. And I'm finding that people are much more willing to believe a work of fiction than they are to believe an actual document that is based in fact. So I decided to make my very first foray into writing fiction by starting with um, a uh, Scarlet. I, I'm, I'm forgetting the title because I always think of it as Favronia's story. A, a study, study in Scarlet. A study in Scarlet is um, the first adventure of Kamaka and Favronia. Uh, Favronia Watkins was a girl from New Eng is from New England. Her parents died in uh, died of consumption, and so her relatives took her family money and shipped her to a relative in Hawaii, where she met her cousin, the um, Kamaka Holmes, a distant cousin to the master, and so. Um, Kamaka decided that Favronia would be her Watson, and so the two girls have embarked on adventures, striving to live up to this uh, ad greatly admired cousin of Kamaka's. Well, Lehua, thank you, and, and great, you know, wishes for great success with the, the work you're doing now. Um, next up, I, I'm looking, I think, at uh, Derek, and he's kind of, uh, and Deborah Lee, McGee, they're kind of hiding there under the screen. But uh, Derek, can you unmute yourself and just say hi? Yeah, hello. Hey, hey everybody. I'm Derek McGee. I'm uh, born and raised in Chicago, a retired Army flight medic. Uh, currently, I'm a procurement analyst with the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, also, most importantly, I'm a neighbor of Mr. Joe Page and uh, Laurie. So um, I was uh, excited to know that, some, you know, that this thing existed about this uh, love of Sherlock Holmes and know that uh, Joe informed me of this, uh, this uh, meeting and everything. So um, knowing that I've, I've always followed Sherlock Holmes and, and I, I, you know, procurement analyst is what I am. And I think I've always thought of uh, how I handle and view problems analytically like Sherlock Holmes. So I'm a true fan. My wife is a true fan. And <laughs> we just... Flat out love the uh, Sherlock Holmes following and, and Sherlock Holmes uh, adventure. So, you know, read, view, listen, anything Sherlock Holmes. I think we're we're fans of. So, go 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 group and go Sherlock. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Derek. Uh, Walter and is it Walter uh, Peeper? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Can you unmute yourself too, Walter? 
No, it's Ashley Piper. Thank you. Got it. Um, I'm, uh, I, uh, I live in Plano, Texas, which is a suburb uh, north of Dallas. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and I'm the vice president of the crew of the Bark Lone Star. Ah. So, yeah, which, which is the DFW uh, 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 Scion. And, uh, and I got interested in uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, uh, the first book I read was The Hound of the Baskervilles uh, when I was uh, about to finish uh, elementary school. And I uh, and I got hooked on it after that and read the stories. So I've been I've been probably uh, involved with Holmes, oh probably for about uh, over 50 years. So uh, so I started uh, so I started uh, uh, collecting books, and as I got older, the collection grew and grew, and <laughs> grew and grew as it, as it does with most people. So um, uh, but but I was. Uh, born and raised in New York City, and um, uh, and my father's uh, uh, firm moved down to Dallas uh, in the mid '60s. So I've been I've been in Dallas now for about uh, 53, 54 years. Very good, Walter. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. And well, thank you. Our pleasure. Uh, Steph, this is Stephanie Shart, I think. Hey guys, as you can tell, I'm in beautiful Hawaii right now, although I'm not actually at the beach, it's just the wallpaper. Um, I'm on the west side of Hawaii. I've worked uh, for the government as operations manager. Um, I've been with civil service probably about 15, 16 years now. Um, I grew up, you know, just surrounded by people who really love Sherlock Holmes and um, my claim to fame is that I've actually been to Baker Street in London, so that was cool. Um, and I'm hoping to um, help out with the media and the social media for the Shaka Sherlockians. And I'm just really happy to be here and appreciate being included. Thank you. Thanks so much, Steph. And uh, I, I see one other, is it uh, William Harlan? William, can, uh, I don't see a video, but can you unmute yourself and say hi? I'm not getting any action. I just want, I just want, I don't want to miss anyone, but if, if we covered, uh, covered the waterfront here, I think. Anyone else? Well, in that case, in that case, I want to, I want to keep moving forward here and uh, we are going to get to our guest speaker. I, I, I thank everyone for taking the time to, to go through that, at least for the, uh, this initial set uh, session. And I wanted to do a, a, a very brief uh, uh, history uh, of the societies. There's been three in Hawaii. This is the, the third attempt. The second we've, we've heard about, uh, which is the Andaman Islanders uh, that was founded by Marcia Chapman Evelyn. And I, I've, I've tried to get in touch with her without success because I, I just wanted to check the dates of that and, and when that occurred and any other information. Uh, but of particular interest, and I've, I learned this, to no surprise, again, because of our guest speaker, who uh, informed me about this, but the very first Sherlockian society in Hawaii was the Baker Street Irregulars of Honolulu. And it was formed sort of like in 1943, 1944, by this um, uh, soldier in the army that was stationed in here in Hawaii during World War II. And uh, he was a reporter for Stars and Stripes. And uh, so he founded, he founded the organization at the end of the war. He left, went back to the States. You know, it disbanded naturally uh, because of that. But uh, this fellow's name uh, was Jerry Siegel. And it, it may sound familiar to, to some, <clears throat> but he, along with uh, his, his friend Joe Schuster, created a cartoon character some of you may have heard of called Superman. And so anyway... Jerry Siegel was the founder of the first uh, Sherlockian scion in, uh, uh, in Hawaii, and I, I think that's kind of way cool. Um, announcements, uh, almost to the guest speaker. Uh, if you know of anyone that might be interested in our group, please you know, just direct them to our website, uh, shakasherlockian.com, and uh, uh, they can take it from there and get in touch with me. And if you want to mark your calendars, uh, we anticipate our meetings being quarterly uh, right now. 
And our next meeting will be on Saturday, uh, the 13th of February, uh, 2021. It'll pretty much be same bat time, same bat channel, uh, but uh, the word will go out later on that. So I just want to mention that. And now, uh, what I've really, really, uh, I'm just, uh, I've just been so excited about this, and I've, I've re received such great support uh, leading up to today, uh, but nothing, nothing lifted my spirits more than uh, obtaining uh, the guest speaker that we have for this, uh, our inaugural uh, meeting. Um, I promise to be quiet <clears throat> and turn the next, <clears throat> excuse me, see, I'm getting choked up about this. Uh, but our next 30 minutes or so, at least, I, I'd like to give to our guest speaker and maybe follow that with a 15-minute Q&A, something like that. But he, he received his investiture in the Baker Street Regulars in 1959 as Black Peter. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he has served as the uh, editor of the Baker Street Journal. Uh, he's currently the secretary of the Baker Street Regulars, <clears throat> and he publishes Oh, an extremely informative newsletter every month, <clears throat> excuse me, called Scuttlebutt by, uh, from the Spermacetti Press. And if you go on our website, the Shaka Sherlocky website, you can find that as, as you can in most other websites. Uh, but I, I highly recommend it. He's, he's recognized as, as one of America's great storytellers. He's a premier collector of things Sherlockian. And uh, I'm almost uh, done reading a book uh, I know I had it here called uh, by Christopher Redmond. It's called uh, About Being a Sherlockian. And uh, there's 60 articles in it, and it seems like about half of them mention Peter. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's he's just been a profound uh, influence. And uh, I like to think of him, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, as the godfather of Sherlockians. And uh, it's my distinct honor and privilege to present Peter Blau. Peter. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Thanks, Peter. I, I'd like to start my formal scholarly talks with a question. And that is, what are the three most famous lies? First, my check is in the mail. And is, of course, I'll respect you in the morning. <laughs> and the third is, I'm from Washington. And I'm here to help you. <laughs> so here I am in Washington, actually Bethesda, Maryland. It's inside the Beltway. So I claim this is still Maryland. I'm wearing my quarantine beard and my Ren Spooner Aloha shirt, which I bought on my fourth visit to Hawaii when I got to see Pam Berry. I was in 2016 when I decided to scratch one thing off my life list as a geologist. <clears throat> Every geologist has a life list of things they need to see. And I'd never seen a working volcano. I said to Beth, I said, you know, want to see a volcano? And she said, where? And I said, Hawaii. She said, I could manage that. So we went. And I actually got within 150 feet of live lava. Uh, it was in the air. We had to fly in a helicopter over the caldera. Whoa. And uh, well, my first visit was in 1956, uh, before they'd invented Sherlockian societies <clears throat> really on Hawaii. This is really great to be back in Hawaii. And so I figured I would talk about Hawaii, having been there now five times, makes me an expert. So I want to talk about some people who didn't visit Hawaii. Uh, one of them was Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, he never visited, but there was a connection because his good friend Robert Louis Stevenson did. They corresponded, and when Stevenson was living in Samoa, where he took the name Tusatala, which means teller of tales, uh, and that he certainly was. And so was Conan Doyle and Rudyard Kipling. Their stories have made them famous. It was great fun indeed when I was a visitor in Edinburgh some years ago and was being shown around by Owen Dudley Edwards, who had identified every house in which Conan Doyle had lived in the city. 
uh, to be invited to the house where Stevenson lived when he wrote Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <clears throat> now, it was from Samoa that Stevenson wrote to Conan Doyle, wondering if Sherlock Holmes had been inspired by their old friend, Dr. Joseph Bell. There's one Stevenson story that should be of particular interest to every Sherlockian. It'll be found in the collection More New Arabian Nights, The Dynamiter, published in 1885. And the story is Story of the Destroying Angel. It's readily available online, and it's easy to see that there are echoes of the story to be found in a study of Scarlet, which is published two years later. Actually, Story of the Destroying Angel was written by Robert Louis Stevenson's wife, <clears throat> Fanny Vandegrift Stevenson, and that leads to another connection. Stevenson's lovely poem, My Wife, which is published in Songs of Travel and Other Verses in 1895. It begins with a stanza, trusty, dusky, vivid, true, with eyes of gold and bramble dew, steel true and blade straight, the great artificer made my mate. Now, if you visit Conan Doyle's grave in Crowborough, you'll find that his wife chose as his epitaph, steel true, blade straight. Now, I just discovered yesterday that yesterday was Robert Louis Stevenson's birthday. It used to be his birthday. I say used to be not because uh, he's dead, but because of what happened when a daughter of a friend complained to him that she had been born on December 25th, and therefore she didn't have a real birthday. So Robert Louis Stevenson drew up a legal document transferring ownership of his birthday, November 13th, to this young girl. So he'd given it away. Uh, so anyway, Conan Doyle never visited, and the next person he never visited was, of course, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, the closest Sherlock Holmes has gotten to Hawaii is in theater. There have been plays. Uh, Susan Zeter's The Life of Death of Sherlock Holmes was performed uh, in, in uh, Wailuku um, in 1991. A Ken Ludwig's wonderful play, The Games of Foot, or Homes for the Holidays, was done in Hawaii in 2020. And his Baskerville, a Sherlock Holmes mystery, was done in Honolulu in 2018. If you ever have a chance to see a play by Ken Ludwig, go. They're really great. Uh, there's also a play called Sherlock Holmes and the Case of the Vanishing Swain, or Elementary, My Dear Watson. I know nothing about this other than it was produced by the Lanakai Mortgage Players at the Shreve Theater in Lanakai Community Center on Oahu in 2016. The last, but certainly not least, Sherlockian play is Hal Glatzer's Sherlock Holmes and the Volcano Horror, which I've never seen, but I've seen the video. Uh, he adapted it from The Adventure of the Devil's Foot. It's been performed in Hawaii many times. I'm delighted to see Hal here this evening uh, because we've corresponded, but we've never met. Uh, Joe showed his uh, Hal's video of the play, and <clears throat> Hal has a website. <coughs> Excuse me. Alglatzer.com, <coughs> and you can buy the video cassette there, <coughs> and I recommend it highly. The other thing I recommend is a book, which is dear to me because it's The Adventure of Black Peter, Hawaiian style. Now, I can't show you the book, but there is a picture of the cover. This is an 18 page book <clears throat> published by the Glen Cannon Press in 2017. Uh, it's Black Peter translated into Hawaiian Pigeon by Deb E. Tenney. And it's also available from the Glen Cannon Press, G L E N C A N N O N Press.com uh, for about 
$20. And it's fun. It'll give you a chance to learn Pigeon Hawaiian. And if the Shaka Shalakians really want a project, they can find someone to translate a story into true Hawaiian and publish it. Because then it would be the first Hawaiian translation to be listed in Don Hobbs's Galactic Sherlock Holmes, which is a now 2300 page electronic bibliography of Sherlockian translations. <clears throat> now there's one last person I want to mention, and he did actually visit Hawaii. And that was Christopher Morley, who was the founder of the Baker Street Directors in 1934. But he visited Hawaii in 1933 to give three lectures at the University of Hawaii. And uh, they were carefully written down by a stenographer and polished up and published in a book called Shakespeare and Hawaii. It's a delightful book. You can find it at abebooks.com. It's not expensive. Uh, it gives you a wonderful chance to see what a delightful writer Christopher Morley was. Now, it's really nice to find that Lori Jones is here because there's a connection. Morley gave these lectures at the University of Hawaii, and the president of the university, David Crawford, wrote on the back cover of the book, Honolulu and the University of Hawaii owe a great debt of gratitude to Mr. Morley, one of those debts, the payment of which is more pleasant when spread over many years. It will require several recurrent trips on his part to collect. He planted a mulberry bush on the campus, an emblem of Shakespeare and a reminder to us of our friendship with that more recent playwright, actor, and poet, Christopher Morley. Now, Rory, I hope that someone at the University of Hawaii can help you locate that mulberry bush so that you can erect a plaque in honor of Christopher Morley's visit to Hawaii. Uh, that's all of the stories I have, really. Uh, I'll be glad to answer questions. Uh, and Joe, you want to moderate them or just turn everybody live and let them attack me? Yeah, I think I, if it's not too much, I, this seems to be an, an incredibly polite group and uh, everyone muted themselves throughout. And, and so feel free to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask a question. And let's, get, let's give that a try if you'd like. Now, please don't ask the questions in a line because I forgot almost everything I, I knew. Aloha. But uh, two words I, have a I know are ah uh ah -uh and pohoi hoi. <laughs> and Hawaiian for two kinds of lava. And I learned that as a geologist. <laughs> I have a comment. You mentioned, Peter, about um, a play that was done in Lanikai. That's a famous um, melodrama theater. And it's, it's, uh, it's fun and painful to watch, as you can imagine. Uh, people do uh, eat a lot of popcorn and are encouraged to boo and hiss constantly, um, when appropriate, of course. Uh, so I don't know anything about that play other than I'm sure it was melodramatic. With Thank a good you. melon, of course. There are only questions. You want to let Andrew see you? Uh, Howard, if, you're, if you have a question, <laughs> unmute yourself. <laughs> All right, Pam, Bev is here. She's the one who keeps my quarantine beard neatly trimmed. Would you like to see her? Yes, I would. Actually, I, I was going to ask the question, but I, then I thought maybe it might be uh, somewhat embarrassing for reasons I don't know. Bev, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I was just off to the side. <laughs> Very good. Go into me. Well, hi. Nice to meet you. Yes, this is this is Walt is very good and quiet. <laughs> All right, so Howard, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Peter, I was wondering how many emails a day do you actually have to answer? I know it's getting we correspond a lot, and I cannot believe how much mail I get. Well, there's a difference between emails I receive and emails I answer. <laughs> One of the best things they invented in modern technology 
was the delete key. <laughs> but I probably send 20 or 25 emails a day, mostly saying thank you or don't do that. <laughs> but the thank you is for people is for people who tell me that something is happening so that I can put it in my newsletter or not. And one of the nicest things about my newsletter is that I started right from the beginning deciding that I wasn't going to tell you everything I knew. <laughs> Peter, I've got a question, uh, if, if I may. When it comes to, I'm just trying to figure out the best phrase to use for the game. Is it the game? Is it the grand game? Is it the great game? Is it the Sherlockian game? Is it the Holmesian game? I've, I've seen all these variations on that theme of the game. And what, what do you prefer or recommend? One of the nicest things about our weird world is that we don't have rules and regulations. Uh, it's a game. Uh, the good Sherlockians have fun playing this game. They know it's a game. Now, the great game is something different. That was the, the, the battle between the British and the Russians as to who was going to control Afghanistan. And historians call that the grand game. So if I have to uh, describe our game, I call it the grand game, just to keep it different from the great game. Correction. You just said that the, um, uh, the, the thing between the British and the Russians was the grand game, you meant the great game. Great game, yeah. But uh, when I first discovered the world of Sherlockians in 1948, a long time ago, it was wonderful. There were a bunch of people having fun playing the game of pretending that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson lived. Watson wrote the stories that Conan Doyle was a literary agent. and. Uh, uh, they pretended to be serious, but they won't. And that's a tradition that still continues. So call it the grand game or the game, or my God, you don't believe that, do you? <laughs> Peter, like, you know, you should have had some kind of a spoiler alert. What if there is somebody here? I mean, this is like Santa Claus. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I couldn't hear that. What if, what if somebody was listening to you who, who was um, not playing it as a game, you know? What if you've just rained on somebody's parade big True time? True believer like me. True believer like Walt here. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the greatest <coughs> lectures I ever heard at a conference uh, was in Bennington, Vermont, when Sherry Rose Bond gave a talk about Sherlock Holmes and Arthur Conan Doyle. And she had two hats. When she put on the deerstalker, she played the game. And then she'd take that off and put on the bowler and she'd do Conan Doyle. And so she did it both back and forth. And I think it's great to be, live, be able to live in two different worlds. Uh, someone once said that, that um, there's a fine line between fantasy and fact, and we do our best to ignore it. The late John Bennett Shaw also said that the only thing that real Sherlockians should take seriously is not taking themselves seriously. So that's my world and welcome to it. I have a question on uh, what would you advise somebody making their very first foray into not only writing fiction, but into writing Sherlockian fiction? Well, uh, my first piece of advice is don't do it because it's really, really hard to do well. There are all sorts of people who, who have written and talked about how they write Sherlockian pastiches. Uh, one of the very best is one I heard uh, just yesterday. Um, someone who, who oh, Bonnie McBird, who has written three very good novel length pastiches, uh, she zoomed into a library in Montana to talk about how they write them. And th this is going to be 
at their website, I'm told. So you can hear it. She works at it. Uh, <clears throat> she has studied and figured out how Conan Doyle wrote his stories so well. And uh, she's a professional writer. She's done screenplays uh, and now is doing novel length pastiches and understands how these are written, what story arcs are and how you need more than one story in a novel because you can do one story in a short story. But uh, the other thing she does is she has spent a lot of time studying how the people in Conan Doyle's stories talked. She learned Victorian English and the shelves are full of pastiches written today by people <clears throat> who just come up with a mystery and say, well, I'm going to put Sherlock Holmes in it. And they have Sherlock Holmes saying, okay, and hey, and things like that. And mm -hmm. it's easy to spot a pastiche written by someone who doesn't understand the world of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, you don't have to be a really good imitator like Vincent Starr was. You can go off in different directions the late Robert L. Fish wrote a wonderful series of parodies, The Adventures of Schlock Holmes. Uh, he didn't take them seriously. August Derleth wrote a wonderful series of, of homages about solar ponds, but neither of them were trying to write, quote, real Sherlock Holmes stories. Uh, Conan Doyle didn't always write good Sherlock Holmes stories. Some of them were better than others. Uh, all of them are fun, but some are better stories. Uh, so uh, it wasn't just glib. If you decide you want to write a Sherlock Holmes story, you need to start by studying the, the canon. <clears throat> Not the facts, but how it was written, what the language was, uh, what sort of sentences, sentence lengths that Conan Doyle used, uh, that sort of thing isn't easy. And I say that because I have never tried to write a pastiche. I can't write fiction. I can't do dialogue. All of my writing has either been uh, journalism or science. And, and someday, uh, in a moment of weakness, I will try and write fiction, but not yet. So, Peter, I wanted to add, if you are interested, if you go to the Beacon Society website, we actually do have a couple of articles that people have written that have written pastiches on how to write a pa uh, Sherlock Holmes pastiche, so you should try that. Uh, Peter, we got one question that came in. The person doesn't have a microphone, and they wanted us to ask uh, what you think of Lindsay Fay's work. Uh, well, she's done different kinds of things. I, I think her novels are fun. She also has worked in getting the Victorian flavor, Victorian style right. Um, she hasn't written anything recently. Uh, she, she's done an introduction for one of Otto Penzer's books. Otto Penzer is reprinting some classic American uh, mystery novels. And uh, Lindsay Fay wrote a, I'm trying to remember which one she wrote an introduction to. Not uh, Anthony Boucher. Someone, go to mysteriousbookshop.com and, and look for the books that, that Penzler Publishers are publishing. I, I think it was Vincent Sterrett, Great Hotel Murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. Grand You're right. Hotel Murder. And uh, she also spent a lot of time uh, working at learning how to do this and has succeeded, I think. Okay, Wait. any more? Um, the, I asked the question, of course, after the horse had left the barn long since. So the book is in final edit now. How much trouble am I going to get myself into with real Sherlockians by having simply appropriated the entire text of A Study in Scarlet and reset it in Hawaii with a cast of people here? Uh, whatever you do, there are going to be some people who shriek in horror. 
and there are going to be people who applaud, stand and applaud. Uh, there's no such thing as the Sherlockians. Um, it's just so many different kinds of people in the Sherlockian world. Uh, <clears throat> most of them don't read Sherlockian pastiches. Uh, many of them don't read the Sherlock Holmes stories. Um, we have at the Red Circle uh, occasionally an adventure of the evening where we announce an adventure in advance and urge everybody to read it and come up with funny questions about it just to get people to actually start reading the stories. Uh, our next meeting, by the way, will be December 12th. Uh, we are one of the truly inclusive societies. Uh, Red Circle, anybody can join and you can't get out. It's like the mafia. <laughs> our website is redcircledc.org. And if you go there, right at the top, you're gonna to find a big red button that says register. All you have to do is click on that, give your email address and your name, and you will later on this month receive a message telling you how to zoom in to our meeting. Uh, come one, come all. Great, thank you. Yeah, I can verify that, and it's it's really worthwhile. It's a great website, and uh, uh, I even have a pin that uh, I meant to wear today, but uh, I, 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 I do have one along with the, the, uh, the SOBs, uh, the, 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 the Sons of Baltimore, or the Sherlockians of Baltimore, I'm sorry. Uh, P Peter, what, what, one other question, uh, uh, and I, I, I say, say it, ask it uh, with uh, tongue in cheek somewhat, but I'm, I've been wondering, I've just seen bits and pieces, uh, Dr. Watson, was 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 Dr. Watson married more times than he was shot? I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure this out. It's it's any 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 thoughts? That that's one of the many canonical questions I've never bothered with. Uh, you know, most people I think vote for two. Some go for five. Bob Katz, who I don't think is with us <clears throat> for years, gave a toast to to. to Watson's wife at the annual dinner of the Baker Street Irregulars, and every time he'd come up with something different or someone different. Um, if you're really smart, you do what they did when they made the Granada series. They filmed the sign of the four, which ends with Watson and Mary Morstan in a fond embrace. And that was the last you saw of Mary Morstan because Granada didn't want to get into the business of, well, she's in the story, but not in that one and what happened to her. So there's things I don't worry. I don't worry about chronology. Uh, is it 1893 or 1894 or spring or fall? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that way madness lies. Uh, I spent two years in East Africa as a geologist. Uh, geologists have a lot of spare time when you're drilling oil wells. So I went through the Sherlock Holmes stories and uh, made notes on everything that had to do with Africa. And then I issued a challenge in the Baker Street Irregulars, which is to list 16 people named in the Sherlock Holmes stories who set foot on the continent of Africa. I offered a suitably African prize to anybody who could do it. And uh, the first person to send in answers uh, sent in a 17th name that I didn't realize. The list now comes up to 21, and I don't have any more prizes. The prize was a piece of Diamond Hill in South Africa, where I was and collected some, no diamonds, just sandstone. Uh, that's the sort of thing I can do. Um, I used to also be able to tell you the eight people in the Sherlock Holmes stories that suffered amputations. Uh, try that. It's an open book oh. quiz. Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> That's one, right? Jonathan Small. <laughs> so, Jonathan so Peter. Small. Uh, people so, with ears or without ears. Yeah. So Peter, there's a few of us that actually believe there was only one wife, but we'll, we won't get into that. But I did want to ask the question, since this is the inaugural meeting 
uh, of this society, and since you've been involved with societies for over 50 years, what advice would you give to people of fledging, fledgling societies on how to be successful? Uh, the only way to be successful is to enjoy the meetings of the society. Uh, my friend, the late John Benetrol, liked to say that all you need for a meeting of a Sherlockian society is two Sherlockians and a table with a bottle on it. And in an emergency, you can dispense with one of the Sherlockians. Uh, there are societies that are scholarly, that every meeting they, they will focus on a story and discuss it. Uh, the epilogues of Sherlock Holmes would do that. And everybody who came to the meeting had to say something about the story. That was an absolute requirement. Uh, as I say, other societies are, are more social. Um, I'm a member of a society that meets once a year and every member has to deliver a paper. Uh, fortunately, we don't have many members because otherwise the meeting would last much too long. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. If you wind up with a bunch of people who really want to dig into a Sherlock Holmes story, do that. If you wind up with people who want to watch a, a television show and talk about that or complain about it, uh, do that. Uh, whatever people want to do. Uh, the best way to be a leader is to follow. So, I'm not sure that's really helpful advice, but it's the best I can do. We'll take it, Peter. That's That sounds good. <clears throat> And um, any any other questions out there before we just yeah because we're we're getting close and the, the we're 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 good on time but uh, Peter I really I really thank you for that very you know what can I say very insightful I uh, I, I I I do want to move uh, into uh, uh, just some open discussion and actually uh, that was one of the issues you just touched on it. Uh, was the focus on, on when we do meet to, to have a guest speaker or drill into, you know, one of the, the, the novels or short stories. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm inclined to, to, for the guest speaker be, be, uh, because uh, uh, less work <laughs> for, for most of us. Uh, I can say that uh, without fear of contradiction. But I want the thing to be painless for folks too. I don't want it to be, you know, demanding. And 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 it'll evolve hopefully in time. But anyone have any thoughts? Uh, you know, ver you know, focus on the stories or guest speaker or, or some other approach. Any comment anyone has at this point in time? And you can always email, of course. Uh, you know where to find me. Joe? Yes, Hal. Joe? Uh, this kind of an open-ended question, not only for Peter, um, but I, I'd like to know if anybody is uh, in the process of assembling stories for uh, Sherlock Holmes pastiche anthology. I happen to have a 16,000 word story that's too long for the mystery magazines, uh, but I think would fit nicely in an anthology. And if someone could uh, email me offline, hal at halglatzer.com, uh, I'd like to uh, meet you and talk about it. Very good, very good, Hal. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking of the fiction writers of Hawaii, uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, there might be a, a channel there, but uh, uh, that's something we can look into. Well, Joe, I, I was gonna say, uh, how if it's specifically for Sherlock Holmes, probably your best bet right now would be uh, David Markham, who uh, is put, has, he's put out, I think, 24 anthologies of Sherlock Holmes stories through MX Publishing, and they're, they're all very good. Um, and so, um, if you'll send me an email, I can send, you know, or to Joe, and he can get, I can give you David's contact information. But he's always looking for uh, stories for the new anthologies. And he actually has the next deadline is the end of December for the next anthology. So this would be perfect timing for you. Very good. Steve, oh, thank you very much. Steve. I appreciate it. I, I point out that uh, David's publisher is Steve Emmex. 
in England, MX Publishing. Uh, they have a website, and they not only publish David's anthologies, but they publish uh, uh, novellas and novels as well. So uh, take a look at the MX Publishing website, and those are, there's a link there that you can uh, get directly in touch with Steve. Very good. It's, it's, it's Steve, Steve, speaking of you, could uh, one of the things I wanted to do at this point, too, is could you say a few words about the Beacon Society? Because I'm, I'm quite sure not everyone is aware of, the, of it and, and the work that it does. Sure. So the Beacon Society is a national nonprofit organization that was established uh, over 20 years ago to educate children or students on Sherlock Holmes. Um, and we have over 200 members. It, it's free to join, obviously. Um, some of the projects that we work on, one of the biggest ones that we've done for years and years and years is to give grants out to teachers, librarians, uh, children's museums, children's theaters, anybody that has a project that they would like to teach kids about Sherlock Holmes. Um, once, you know, every year we give out grants up to $750 that people will apply. Um, and so, and those are usually due by the end of May. Um, the second thing is we do the Beacon Award each year where we give out a, a, an award to somebody that's done, you know, wonderful work with children over the year on educating Sherlock Holmes. I think we have a really gr good uh, website and it's just www.beaconsociety.com. Uh, all sorts of educational materials on there uh, from elementary school all the way up to universities. We have, a, you know, several theses and dissertations that people have written about Sherlock Holmes on there that you can read if, uh, if you like to get into the higher education parts. A uh, couple of things that I think y'all might be interested in, if you have any kids, either grandkids, kids, or friends, or you're a teacher of kids, uh, two things. The first one is that last year we started the Joel Center Essay Contest uh, for kids from fourth grade up to 12th grade. They can write an essay um, and you can go to our website and see all the details and there's prizes and prize money for the kids and those are due by, you know, the, uh, I think January 12th this year of 2021 uh, and there's a committee that, that reads them and, and grades or judges them. So uh, any child in America or, or Canada is, is able, uh, eligible to enter that, they just have to write an essay about one of the stories and so the, again the instructions are on there. And then the second thing is, uh, we just issued our inaugural issue of what we're calling Sherlock Spotlight, which is going to be a, a quarterly gazette or newsletter just for younger Sherlockians. Uh, and so if you've got any kids that you uh, think are interested in Sherlock Holmes, you can share with them this gazette and we will actually send it to them directly if they wanna sign up on our website. It has crossword puzzles and little stories and mini ministries and all sorts of things that we're, we're doing and we're asking for kids to submit artwork to put in there if they would like. So we want to, you know, make this as kid friendly as possible. And that Gazette is tied to the last thing I'd mentioned, which is the Junior Shalakian Society, which is part of our Beacon Society, which is a whole organization for kids that are interested in Sherlock Holmes. And there's a lot of activities and projects they can do to get uh, certificates for that. Uh, and I will also mention, Joe, you know, on, for the adults, we actually also uh, sponsor and, and administer the Fortescue Scholarship Exams, which was established by the Watsonians years ago, Susan Diamond and a couple other people. Uh, but we took it over several years ago, and it's a series of tests that you can take on Sherlock Holmes. Uh, they're not that hard if you can, you know, if you have access to the canon, obviously, but but it gives you a chance to go back and, and re-look at the stories and, and answer questions and, and you can earn your, uh, your degrees in Sherlock Holmes and work your way through it. And several people on the, the, the Zoom call here have been through it. So, that's it. But, and all that's on the Deacon Society website. Yeah, the, the more I dig, the more I find. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's amazing how much information is, is out there. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost overwhelmed by it, but thank Stephen, thank, Thanks, thanks a lot, because people should know about the Beacon Society if they, no, I appreciate. If they, if they don't already. I, I just wanted to mention a, a few more things. We're getting close to the end, uh, I'm, I, I'm happy to say. 
but um, if you um, haven't seen it yet or aren't aware of it, there's there's a show that's available through both Facebook or on YouTube um, known as the Fortnightly uh, Dispatch. And it's, it's hosted by uh, Steve Doyle, uh, who's the publisher of the Baker Street Journal. And uh, they've done 14 of them this year. The last one was, was actually posted yesterday. I watched, watched that last night. But they're wonderful one-on-one -on -one interviews. There's uh, uh, one fellow by the name of Peter Blau, for example, that does uh, about an hour with, with Stephen. And they, they really cover the waterfront. And there's a lot of fun, interesting, insightful stuff. So the fortnightly dis uh, uh, dispatch, which is readily available on both uh, YouTube and Facebook. If you if you go to Facebook, uh, if you do a search on the Baker Street Journal, uh, you'll you'll you will find it there. Uh, oh, Joe, I um, also sent a link in the chat uh, for the official YouTube channel for the Baker Street Journal, where the fortnightly dispatch is uh, published. Per perfect. Thank you. thank you very much. I, I, I see it there now. And uh, I, I might add, if you don't know, there's uh, you can join the Sherlock Holmes Society of London for you know it doesn't it's not an arm and a leg and they publish a, a quarterly magazine. I, I also uh, discovered this new Sherlock Holmes magazine uh, that's being published in England and uh, it's really quite good and detailed and well done. So uh, just to, to mention that. Um, if anyone at the next uh, our next session uh, is interested in, in writing a quiz or doing a toast, just send me an email. Let me know, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there. Uh, and it's time for, it's time for our pop quiz. Okay, so if you don't <clears throat> if you don't have uh, uh, your chat uh, fired up yet, do this because the first I'm going to ask a question, and the first one that comes up with uh, the correct answer on chat. Uh, and it's a simple answer. Uh, we'll we'll win something, uh, which I, I will I will see that they get. And uh, the the question is this. I'll read it here so I'll make sure I don't screw it up. Uh, everybody ready? This is the big one. How many steps up is it from the entrance to the waiting room at two twenty one B Baker Street from the entrance? How many steps from the entrance to the waiting room? It's found in a scandal in Bohemia. Holy smokes. Boom, boom, boom. I got to tell you, Howard Ostrom is the winner. And how, Howard, if, if, if you, well done, well done. I've got, I've got five answers in. They're coming in like wildfire. Yeah, 17. If you looked at our website, you would have found that, uh, that there uh, somewhat prominently. And, uh, Anyway, uh, Howard, send me your mailing address if you don't mind. Just email that to me, and I'll take it from there, okay? And we'll get you something uh, something nice. And I, I uh, uh, actually, I, I shouldn't keep it a secret. It will be the coveted Sherlock Holmes mug, which is really uh, a very it's 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 very nice. It's my favorite. It's it's my favorite mug. It's well made. Uh, Okay, gang, uh, the next meeting, again, the 13th of February, uh, contact me if you need to reach out to anyone, if, if you haven't already done so through chat or, or otherwise at the meeting. Uh, and I'd like to, to, to wrap it up uh, with, with at least uh, one uh, tradition that I'd, I'd, I'd like to make part of our organization, uh, which is the reading and I'll, I'll do it this time. Somebody else will do it. Somebody different every time. But it's uh, a simple poem. It's not long. It's quick. But it's uh, written by uh, the great Vincent Sterrett. And it's called 221B. Okay. And I think you all know what, what that is. So I will read this. Here dwell together still two men of note who never lived and so can never die. How very near they seem, yet how remote that age before the world went all awry. But still the game's afoot for those with ears attuned to catch the distant view. Hello! England is England yet, for all our fears, only those things the heart believes are true. A yellow fog swirls past the window pane as night descends upon this fabled street. A lonely hansom splashes through the rain 
the ghostly gas lamps fail at 20 feet. Here, though the world explode, these two survive, and it is always 1895. So there it is, 221B, Vincent Sterrett. So everyone, thank you so much for participating today and, and making this, I, I, I think it was a pretty good meeting. Didn't run too terribly long. And uh, I, I, again, many thanks to Peter Blau for making this so special and uh, to Steve Mason as well for, for all of his help uh, before and now. And uh, I'm just uh, amazed how many folks in the BSI and, and ASH are, are, are part of this. And, and uh, uh, you're more than uh, welcome always to be, be part of the Shaka Sherlockians and, and more later. Any other final last minute comments from anyone? We'll call it a day. I wish you a good, good weekend, everyone. Stay uh, happy and healthy. And uh, Shaka, Shaka, Sherlockian, okay? <laughs> Something like that. Anybody get a better idea? You let me know, okay? All the best, everyone. Take care. Bye. Shaka. Bye. Aloha. Bye. Aloha. There's Bye. always the opium pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, stay on for a minute. Okay, you want to see, okay? All right. Oh, no, well, just, okay, all right. No, do you need me for anything else? Oh, for, well, well, no, I think, I think I'm good, Steve. Uh, I, I, I will let you in on a little secret. Uh, 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 five, uh, uh, Gretchen and I have five daughters and they were all in on the meeting today. <laughs> Wow. So I only see two of them left now. But uh, I, I really appreciated that, Chris and Allison. Thanks, gang. And thanks, everyone. All right. Talk to you later. All right, guys. Bye -bye. Are we Bye -bye. good? Take care. I'll end meeting for all. Aloha. Aloha.